Welcome to Maze Lead Code Challenge. Today's problem is contiguous array. Given a binary array, find the maximum length of a contiguous subarray with equal numbers of zeros and ones. Say we've been given this list, zero and one. We know the maximum length of a contiguous array would be zero and one, or two, because we have one zero here and one one there. So yeah, that's the maximum length. What about this, zero, one, zero? We know that either 0, 1 or 1, 0 are going to be the contiguous arrays, so it's going to have a maximum length of 2. The solution to this problem, it's hard to come up with if you've never seen it before, but there's a couple intuitions here that you need to think about. So first, how would we know if an array is contiguous, right? Now you might say, well, all you need to do is get the length and sum up all the ones, and if the value of the sum of all these array integers equals half the length of the list given to us, then we know that this list is contiguous. Uh, but that's kind of hard to, that works, but it's hard to implement as far as doing it for all these contiguous arrays. So what's another way we can do it? Well, imagine if we converted all these zeros into negative ones, right? If all of these were negative ones, the zeros, then we know it's contiguous if the sum of the whole rate is equal to zero. So say like at here, we'll say this, the current sum is minus one because it's a zero. And then at this here, we add that and now it's gonna be a cumulative sum of zero. We know at this point, it's contiguous. Like up to from the beginning to, to this point here, this array is contiguous, this subarray is contiguous. And same thing here, right? We'll say zero, now that's negative one, add one, now it's zero. So up to here it's contiguous, but now it's negative one, so now it's not contiguous. All right, so how can we take use that to our advantage to find the subarrays that are contiguous and then get the max length? Well, let's say that we have an array like this, right? Let's calculate our cumulative sum as we move along. So zeros are gonna be minus one, one is gonna be, uh, just one, so we add that, so now it's gonna be zero, right? Um, so let me clean that up here. And that helps, because now we know here, at this point, it's contiguous. So we, maybe we could store our length here, and that's gonna be two. What about here, minus one, uh, so it's not. What about here, minus two, it's not. What about here, we add minus one, so it's not. What about here, it's zero. So here it is contiguous. So we, we do already know that this whole subarray is contiguous. Um, but how can we use this to our advantage to find all the subarrays that are also contiguous? So take a look at like uh, at this point when we say there's a ne it's negative one, right? Well, something interesting happens here where we see that if we look at the index of the points that also share the cumulative sum, the contiguous array after that index is well the subarray after that index is also contiguous so negative one if we look at negative one here and find the subarray after that index we see that's contiguous and what about here at negative one we see that this part's contiguous right so that's that's interesting like how, why did that happen and if you think about it what are, what are these cumulative sums actually signifying basically if it's negative one it basically means we have the extra zero if it's positive, like if it's one or two, that means we have extra ones or twos, right? So basically, like when we look and say here at this point, up to this point, we have an extra zero. If we say, all right, well, up to this point, we also have an extra zero. Let's just like get rid of that part. And if we do, then the rest of the subarray is contiguous. And you can see how there's two negative ones here. We want to get the one that's the maximum length. So how about we store a dictionary, okay? Store like a lookup table and say, okay, for this lookup table, we're gonna store the um, cumulative sums as the key and the earliest index as its value. And that way we can see every time um, we get a cumulative, calculate a cumulative sum, check in this lookup, have we seen this cumulative sum before? Because if we have, then we could, prob we could find the subarray that's also contiguous inside what we've calculated so far. All right, so hopefully that made some sense. I'll try to write that out and
here's what we'll have to begin with. First, we said we want to initialize a, a lookup table, right? So let's make that a dictionary. And we want to initialize two things. We want to say, all right, what's our max length that we want to return? And what's the cumulative sum that we're going to be um, updating as we go through this loop? So for i in range of the length of nums, let's first calculate our cum sum, right? Calculate cum sum. Uh, and how do we do that? Well, if nums dot i, if it equals zero, then we want to subtract, right? Subtract from our cum sum minus one. Else, it's going to be equal to one. I think that's an assumption, so we'll just uh, add one to that. Now, great, we have our cum sum, and there's three things that could happen, right? Either this uh, scenario one is cum sum equals zero. So that just means store our max length for the beginning up to this index, right? Store max length up to this index. What else could happen? Well, it might not be zero. It could be one of these, like minus one or minus two. So if that happens, first, like, let's check. Have we seen, have we seen this index before? And if so, update our max length with the this with this index point up to the earliest index point that we've seen this the same value. And finally, if none of these match, we'll just store our um, we'll store our cumulative sum as the key and add this index into the dictionary. So just store lookup. Okay, so. I'll write that here. We'll so stay with all right. If cum sum, if it equals zero, well, all right. Max length is equal to this index point, right? That's that's simple enough. Now, if cum sum is in our lookup, I don't think it doesn't. If cum sum in lookup, well, then store either the max of whatever max length we have now or the index current index value minus our lookup uh, with our cum sum as the key, because that might actually be longer than any maximum we've calculated so far. And otherwise, just say let's just store our cumulative sum uh, into our lookup table, and that's just going to be the index point there. And then after we're finished with that we should have stored our max length. We should have stored max length because that's the question here. All we want to care about is what is the maximum length that we can get. So let's see if that works. Uh-oh. Uh so did not get the right answer. Zero, one. Um, right, because here's the thing. It doesn't work if you just store the index point, right? You have to add one to get the length. So let's try that. And that does look like two works. And let's see if everything else works there. Yeah, so it's not um, uh, the easiest problem because there's a couple like things you kind of already have to know previously to get this to work. Um, like I, I would think it's very difficult to come up with this on the spot if you've never seen this problem. But that's like some of the things you need to think about. Like with zero and ones, if you want to find um, equal numbers, right, for a binary problem. See if converting the zero into a minus one will help out at all. And uh, if that does, try to see what values we can store in our um, cumulative sum lookup tables to take advantage of so that we can create like a dynamic programming hash table uh, to calculate our max sums like more easily. So, thank you.